I just released the fastest website of my career. And in this video, I want to show you all the unconventional ways that I used to actually get there. And so if you look at my scores here, it's all 100% across the board. It's on slow 4G throttling on a mobile device. I try to get it like super rich in media. There's all the content I create is on there. Everything about me, about my setup, all the conference things I do, like, all my videos, like there's lots of lists and things and you can see how fast this thing actually loads. And that was my point. I always want to figure out these kind of things on personal projects so I can then advise and work on with other people if let's say they do a e-commerce site. So why not try all the ways I could figure out in the current space of how to make this thing fast. Let's talk about the stack that I used and then we'll just go over all kind of the different things that I've done to make this work. And so I have used Nuxt 3, which I tend to use. But what I decided to do is not follow the current trend of doing server components and ISR caching and things like that. I actually decided based on a bunch of research and trying things out to just go back old school. I'm completely statically rendering this website and putting it on the CDN edge as just a bunch of HTML files. That's it. For me, that worked well. I could have done server renders and then ISR cache it after the first visit and then just have the same result. Turns out there's a tiny little bit of overhead if you do this on Vercel or Netlify it because the whole Nuxt runs in one serverless function. There might be a cold start time. And if some people will be able to kind of feel that sometimes. And I noticed if I just statically rendered it, I didn't have that. It was, it was markedly faster just simplifying that stack. And so that's the first kind of strange thing I did. So there's a bunch of speed optimization things I've done. And so the first one is just, the, it's basically the biggest of all, make sure you're not render blocking. And we've talked about this for years, right? And so now that we have HTTP 2.0 with multiplexing, you would think I can just in parallel load a bunch of files and it's no problem. As it turns out, I had a few hiccups here. Um, because if you use Nuxt out of the box, even if you just generate something static, it will actually um, create JavaScript and payload files to hydrate the HTML after the fact. And when you click on a link, it becomes a single page app. And that feels super fast because it's already preloaded and you can click and it just goes through and no page requests. It's actually super fast. But when you do that in combination with how I built this with Nuxt content and markdown files that I use for my content, it actually preloaded like 25 or 26 JavaScript files and JSON payload files. And as it turns out, that's kind of fine. But when you then also have a CSS file that it preloads, that's render blocking. And those files are fighting with the CSS file on which one goes first. And I didn't find a way to say, first load my CSS, then do the rest. So what I tried and decided on is, you know what? I'm just gonna kill all the JavaScript in this whole build. I'm just gonna go old school and just render HTML. And where I need JavaScript, I will just vanilla JS it. And so in Nuxt here, you have this option to say, no scripts is true. Um, I made a switch here because in certain instances, I did want the scripts, but now I turn it off. And so now we didn't have all these preloading files. There were no JSON payload files to be loaded. It was so much simpler and I did notice a difference in how fast everything started to feel on page load on the page itself. To go to subsequent pages, it was kind of slower again, but I found a solution for that, but we'll go there in a sec. So when we go back to my readme here, yeah, so I figured that out and I also removed um, all this render blocking CSS actually. Um, I decided to put all the CSS, has, CSS I had in all the components into one file. I put it all in Tailwind CSS, all like my more custom stuff, my linear background, gradients, things like that. Um, backdrop filter, all the stuff I just wanted to like apply to things. I put it in one file and then in the next config, I said inline styles true. And so it wouldn't even load that file anymore. So the combination of having no preloaded anything and no CSS as render blocking, it just changed the vibe and the feeling of how fast something loaded. And so I decided to keep that. Um, it did give me some issues here and there, and let's talk about these now. If you use Nuxt itself, 
just out of the box, it looks at all the Nuxt link tags and then preloads all the payloads for those pages where they link to. So when you go to that page, it's super fast. When you turn off the script, you don't have that anymore. So I had to find out how to pre-render with speculation rules for Chromium browsers. And I did that in app.view. And so here you can see, I just add a script tag with speculation rules that preload all my pages. So when I go to the homepage, the browser sees that and starts preloading in the background, these pages in hidden tabs, I think something like that. Of course, you see I'm loading all my top level uh, links. That's why this is so fast. I might have to check um, later on in my RUM scores, like real user scores of how fast this website is, not lab scores, but real user scores, if this maybe slows it down for people who have like devices that are not so fast. So I might kill like press kit and uses and things like that, that like most people will probably go to the about page and the live and kicking page and the home page. So I might dial that down a bit, but for now, this is how I kept it. And also you can see this here. I actually have an inner HTML script tag that um, does basically toggling off a class. Because if I don't have JavaScript, how do I do this? I need to have a class name added or removed. So I just added like these four lines of JavaScript. That's all I needed for that. So I don't need to lose in that load Vue.js and all the other overhead just for toggling a class. Just go old school and do this and it just works fine. And of course, if you have more JavaScript and more stuff to do, don't do it this way. But for this project, this worked perfectly fine. Um, let's see. So. I actually use um, more web safe fonts than I thought I would in the beginning because I used Leto font, which is from Google. It's great. But I noticed my LCP um, actually slowing down a little bit and also my commutative layout shift was going up a little because with the font in place, it would look like this on a mobile. But when it would render first and the Leto font wasn't there yet, it was on two lines and then it just switched to one line. And the LCP of this paragraph actually became bigger than the image load because of this custom font and there was some stuff going on. And so I'm still using the font on all the titles and I'm using Daniel Rowe's Nuxt fonts module that does a bunch of really interesting things to load fonts super fast. But going to a native font, like um, I think what did I do, I have Trape you say, I cannot say these words. This font, I have this as my root. And the cool thing is about this Nuxt fonts module. If I just put font family anywhere in any CSS, it will just load this from Google. It just works. Super optimized. So the combination of a, a web safe font and a fancy font made this thing the fastest. Um, let's see, did I have something else? Yes, of course we have images. So all images are loaded through Cloudinary. They are by far the fastest image delivery service I've ever seen. They're really good at calculating the quality of the image that still looks, makes it look good and what file format for that quality. And it uses AI for that. It's really, really, really good. Um, I've said really good a while, a few times now, because that's what I think of Cloudinary. I use it for everything. And so most images are lazy loaded, except the ones above the fold. Those are actually loaded as eager and they have a fetch priority of high, which means in the chain of all the things that have to be loaded by the browser for this site, these hero images are the first, right? And that's why this is so fast and so stable. And the main thing is that I actually forgot in the beginning, add a width and a height to the image. Because then the browser, even if it's not loaded yet, takes the space so your layout shift doesn't happen. It's always stable. Like that's why this is so stable because it takes the space and of course it's already preloaded. So that's how fast this gets, right? And um, so that's it about all the things I did. And it's slightly unconventional in some ways, like remove all the goodness Nuxt gives you out of the box and just cherry pick what you need with some vanilla stuff. If you actually open the box, dive in, talk to the creators of these tools and figure things out, you can get to this result. If you don't do that, you're, you're at 90% of this result and you're still probably better than most. But isn't it super fun to dive in and really get into the nitty gritty? Well, that's what I did and that's why this thing works so well. And so feel free to look this up on GitHub. It's open, you can just run it and try. Um, you can also ask me questions about it because it's quite strange and there's definitely um, a few things that can be better, but that's why this is an iterative process. So feel free to ask me or tell me Dude, why this? Why that? Anyways, um, happy coding and I'll see you soon. Cheers.